So the question today comes from a Brad Kazee from Kazee Ponds. It's a video question, so let's hear it. Hey Eric, Brad Kazee with Kazee Ponds in Vail, Arizona. What up, Brad? I'm a huge fan of underground grid filtration systems. So my question for you is, why don't more manufacturers and contractors utilize this low maintenance filtration system? That is a great question, Brad. First of all, Brad is a fantastic pond builder out in Vail, Arizona. And uh, it started in his own backyard. He just wanted to build his own pond and he called us up. We used this Helix design guide and we coached him along. And um, he is a dynamite pond builder right now and he almost has his contractor's license at this time today. And uh, he's moving along real quick with his business and I'm excited for him. But let me get to the question. Uh, it's real simple, Brad, because you can't make a lot of money on PVC parts. Let's face it, you know, a, a PVC part is a couple, two, three dollars. So when you're doing a suction grid on your pond, you know, there's not a whole lot of money to be made in that aspect from a pond equipment and manufacturer's position. So that's why you're not seeing that kind of um, assistance or support from any of the other manufacturers out there because it's just the way it is. Um, for all the viewers out here, you don't really know what the under gravel suction grid is. If you're following me, uh, the Pond Digger on, on our Facebook platforms or our Instagram platforms, you'll see that we, uh, we do quite frequently install the under gravel suction grids. I'm a big fan of them. We've been doing them for nearly a decade. And you know, quite frankly, they work fantastic when you do them correctly. I'll tell you a scenario and, and just a testimony of how good they are if they're done correctly. I, I built a pond for a client. Uh, he said he wanted to you know, have a ton of fish in the pond and when I think that I have too much filtration, put some more on there. So you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna put an under gravel suction grid, I'll put UV, I'll do this, that, the other. And I, I put a lot of stuff on there and I told him, you know, you can have this many fish in the pond. Well, he quadrupled that number of fish and he way overstocked the pond and the fish are really big and I've kept a close eye on the pond because it's close to my home and I, I can't even tell you how, how clear the pond is, how beautiful the pond is, how beautiful the floor of this pond is and literally it's, it's four times overstocked. I'm not encouraging that you do this but I'm just telling you how effective the filtration system can be. Pond's crystal clear and uh, we're talking a hundred jumbo koi in a 6,000 gallon pond. And I've watched it closely. I even, we, we take care of this customer pretty closely because as I said, he's a friend of mine. And I've watched his fish food sales. And one day I just went, hey, look up. Uh, I want to know how much fish food he put in his pond last year. 240 pounds of fish food went into the pond last year with 100 jumbo koi. And the pond is crystal clear. All the fish are healthy. And of course, we, we have to work extra hard on maintenance and fil you know washing filters and all that stuff. But it's just a testimony to how good that system can work in a pond. And um, the reason why, let's continue on with your question, is why the manufacturers aren't promoting it is because they can't make money at it. Number two, uh, why are the contractors not using it? And, and that's, that's really simple because it kind of starts at manufacturing because they're kind of the helm of the education of teaching, teaching uh, contractors how to get stuff done and how to be profitable and, and how to build ponds and different technology styles. And since no one's out there really promoting or teaching that style and no, the contractors don't really know about it, I will tell you there's some old school contractors out there that are not fans of under gravel suction grids because back in the late 70s and early 80s the there were some contractors that that used that construction technology and they cut a lot of corners and they kind of gave the, the filtration technology a, a bad taste a, some bad publicity if you um, let, let me just put it this way if you were making some cookies and you know you went to put the salt in I'm sorry, if you went to put the sugar in 
to the recipe in the mix and you replace the sugar with salt, it would be a disaster, right? You wouldn't want to eat those cookies. They would taste horrible. It's just the same factor when you're building an under gravel suction grid in the pond. If you mess the recipe up, it is uh, it could be disastrous and you could clog it all up and it's just a, it's a hot mess. So that, that's kind of what happened. It got some bad press back in the day. But what you really need to kind of take home from this is this is a technology that was used many, many years ago. And I have communicated with some uh, very old pond builders that used this technology for decades, decades with fantastic success. And I'm not going to use any names, but I've, I've had really long conversations with some very important people about this technology. And as I said, I've used it for a nearly a decade myself, and I'm very, very fond of it. But once again, our construction styles, we like to use all kinds of different construction styles from dedicated koi ponds to suction grids to ecosystem ponds, water gardens, five gallon buckets with a little goldfish in it and some plants. I like it all. I did, um, I hope that answers all your questions on that, Brad. And the rest of you people, if you don't know about the Undergravel Suction Grid, then follow us on our Facebook fan page and you can see some of our, our later posts of some of the construction styles. Now I did have another question. Uh, it was shot out uh, on Facebook and they wanted to know if this design guide is free. That's a great question. And the answer is, Yes, it is free. You can go to helixlifesupport.com and you can download the PDF file and you can download it for free. So the question of the day is, um, it's gonna pertain back to this Helix design guide because right now we're working on an extended version of the design guide and uh, we're gonna put a lot of schematics and cross sectionals in there, a lot of different construction philosophies and I wanna know what kind of details are you hoping to find in a Helix design guide? Thank <laughs> you.